happy Sunday and happy Valentine's Day. I wish we were all together so that I could give you some candy, but I'm very happy that we're here together on the internet too. If you're watching on YouTube, just as a reminder that we meet together every Sunday to Zoom at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I love getting to Zoom with everybody. It is always so, so fun. All right, you guys, I want to ask you our question of the day today. And my question of the day for you is, what is something that you have done for someone else because you love them? What is something that you've chosen to do because you love somebody? Maybe you've helped your mom do the dishes or you've made your bed without being asked. What's something you do just because you love someone? All right, now we need to change our green screen. Ready? All right, I mean, I know this is kind of on the nose because it's Valentine's Day, but it's kind of fun. All right, you guys, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this time together. Thank you that you are in control of our lives. And God, thank you that Jesus paid the price for our sin by dying on the cross and rising again. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to understand that that is a free gift and you would help us to accept it. And God, that you would help change our hearts so that we can live lives for you. Jesus, thank you for today's lesson. Please open our eyes and our ears and our hearts. We love you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, everybody, great job. Before we go into our lesson, we've got to do our scripture memory verse. This is our third week doing this verse, and I think it's our last week. I think next week we will begin a new scripture memory verse. So this week is the last time that we will be doing Matthew 5, 16. First, let's read it all together. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Great job. Now, if you've never been with us before, we always add motions to our verse so that we can remember it better. And our motions are a combination of sign language and just fun moves. So for the first part of the verse, we're going to say, in the same way. You put your thumb out and your pinky out and you move it side to side. In school, when you do same or me too, you might go between you and the other person. So you can also do it to the side. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Yeah, let's do that one more time. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works let's do that part again so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven matthew 5 16. so in this verse jesus is kind of giving us great advice in how we should live our lives yeah jesus calls himself the light of the world and when we love him and we believe in him, he gives us his light. And so Jesus is saying in this verse, in the same way, let your light shine before others. You want everyone in the world to see the light that Jesus has given you. Yeah? And you want to do that so that they may see your good works, the good things that you do, so that they may give glory to your Father who is in heaven right? That means people will see what you do and hear what you say, and they will think, wow, God is real. God is good. Look at my friend and what they're doing. That shows me that God is real. And we can't do that without God's help, but God will help us. God will help us to do good works. Not so that people say, oh, you're so great but people will see your good works so that they give glory to your Father God who is in heaven, right? So the things we do out of love for Jesus will help people see him better. Let's do the whole verse one more time. Ready, one, two, three. In the same way, let your light shine 
before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Great job, everybody. Okay, that was really good scripture memory. Now we've got to jump into our lesson today. And our lesson today happens in the book of Matthew, in the book of Mark, and in the book of Luke. It happens three times in the New Testament. And it is a really important lesson that Jesus taught his disciples. His disciples were the people who followed him. They were his good friends, right? So today we're going to learn something that Jesus taught. And it's a really good thing, but it's a little serious. First, let's start in the book of Luke. If you have your Bible, Luke is the third book of the New Testament. And we're going to go to Luke 9, chapter 9. And we're going to start in verse 23. So the big 9 and the little 23. Now, I'm going to read us this verse first. It says, And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Let's pause for a moment. Let's think about what we know Jesus had been doing. We know Jesus had been teaching people. He had been healing people. He had been doing miracles. And people loved Jesus. Big crowds would come to hear Jesus talk or people who were sick would come to Jesus to get healed. And everyone wanted to know more about Jesus. They wanted to hear what he was going to teach. And a lot of people said, Jesus, we want to follow you. And so Jesus was trying to teach everyone what it means to truly follow God. So that's why in that first verse, in verse 23, it says, and he said to all, he wasn't keeping this information secret. He wanted everyone who was around to hear him say this. And so that applies to us too. So when Jesus was speaking to people, it still affects us today. So it's very special to learn what Jesus said. So he said to everybody, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. But what does that mean? Did you hear the word cross in there? Well, if you aren't familiar, a lot of us might know this though. Jesus died on the cross. And I even once had a friend tell me recently or ask me recently, you know, did Jesus know he was going to die on the cross? And Jesus did. He knew he was going to die and come back to life. Now, Dying on the cross in the Bible times was common in the New Testament. And it was a really painful way for people to die. Today in America, that is not something that happens. But it happened a lot a long time ago. And so Jesus knew he was going to die and pay the price for sin. And when someone would die on the cross, they normally had to carry their own big heavy cross. So they'd pick up the cross and they'd carry it and it was very, very heavy. And so Jesus says that if anyone wants to come after me, if anyone wants to go after Jesus, the first thing he has to do is to deny himself. And what that means is we have to stop thinking about what we think is best and begin to think about what God thinks is best. God is very clear what is best in the Bible, right? Let's say I had a ton of Valentine's Day candy and what I wanted was to eat all of it myself and to not share any of it. What Jesus is saying this verse, if I wanna come after Jesus, I have to deny myself, which means I shouldn't eat all my candy. I should share it, right? I should give it away. And it applies to much more than candy. It applies to our whole lives, to our time, to our money, 
to everything. So Jesus is the first thing, if we really want to follow him, the first thing we have to do is to deny ourselves. We have to say, wait a second. I'm Miss Julia. I'm not the most important person. Miss Julia is not the most important person. Jesus is the most important person. And what does God say? That is the most important. And then Jesus says, and take up his cross daily and follow me. When Jesus talked about taking up a cross, the people listening would have known that Jesus t was talking about the thing that people died on, the pe thing that people were crucified on. That is a hard job. So Jesus is saying, if you're going to be my follower, you have to deny yourself. You have to know that you're not the most important thing. And you have to take up your cross. And for a lot of people, a lot of Jesus' disciples in the New Testament, that became a really literal thing. It wasn't a metaphor. A lot of Jesus' early followers died because they believed in Jesus. People said either, like the people in charge, the bad guys, they kind of said, okay, either stop believing in Jesus or we're going to kill you. And the people said, fine, I believe in Jesus. I will die for Jesus. And so a lot of the people who wrote the New Testament were killed for believing in Jesus. So Jesus is saying, you guys, I love you. And I want you to be in my family. And Jesus dying on the cross and rising again to pay the price for our sins, we call that a free gift. We call it grace. And it is. Yeah? Jesus doesn't expect us to be perfect. He doesn't expect us to be the best. He died for our sins because he loves us. But when we begin to understand that love, what it does is it changes our heart. When we understand who he is, he is God, he is perfect, he is powerful, and he came here and he died for us. When we begin to understand the love that Jesus has for us, our behavior begins to change. So when I know that Jesus loves me and died for me, I want to deny myself. I don't want to be the most important person. I want Jesus to be the most important person. Yeah? And it's because I see what he's done for me. When I look at everything Jesus has done for me, I understand that sometimes I'm going to have to make the hard choice. I'm going to have to carry my cross daily, every day. Jesus isn't saying it's just a one and done. Every day we have to choose to follow him and to deny ourselves. Let's say all the popular kids at school are teasing somebody. And it would be really easy to just join in so that the popular kids liked me. It'd be so easy to tease somebody so I could fit in with the cool crowd. What would Jesus want me to do? He'd want me to deny myself, to think, okay, Miss Julia, what you want is not the most important. What matters is that you follow what God wants. And God is very clear that people shouldn't bully other people. And knowing that will help me follow Jesus and stick up for the kid who's being teased. Does that make sense? That's just another example. Let's see what else the scripture says. Verse 24 says, For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? This goes hand in hand with what Jesus was saying about denying yourself and carrying your cross. You see, Jesus denied himself. He came down from his perfect throne. Jesus is God. And he denied himself. He did not put what was best for him first. He did what was best for us. And what he did was he laid his life down. He died on the cross for our sins. 
He set the perfect example of denying yourself, taking up your cross, and losing your life. Jesus did all of those things so that we might be with him forever. So when he asks us to deny ourselves and take up our cross, he showed us how to do that. And how we can learn from that is the Bible. So here on earth, when we put God first and we put others first, that is what it means by losing your life, by saying, I am not the most important. Go back to my example about the teasing. Let's say you stuck up for the kid who was getting teased. What might happen? The popular kids might start teasing you. And that would feel like a loss. You might feel upset that they teased you. But what Jesus is telling us is that actions like that, that put God first, when we meet God someday, he would say, hey, I loved that you stuck up for that kid, for following what the Bible says. Does that make sense? So all of these are little examples. In each of our lives, we're going to have different circumstances, different things that happen that make us think, hmm, am I denying myself or am I putting myself first? And how can I follow God's word? How can I deny myself when I really want to put myself first? We can pray. We can read the Bible to remember what Jesus is asking of us. But most importantly, we can read the Bible and pray and praise God to remember what Jesus has already done for us. Because Jesus paid the price for our sins by dying on the cross and rising again, we will be with Jesus in heaven forever when we accept that free gift. So anything we lose on earth or anytime we deny ourselves, the fact that we will one day be with Jesus in heaven is like so much better. Like imagine if you had, you know, we've been using candy as a metaphor today. Imagine if you had one sweet tart and it was old and it had hair like lint on it, you know, when like candy falls on the ground and it was stale let's say you only had one sweet tart and you thought, this is my sweet tart. I am never letting the sweet tart go. This is what I want. But what Jesus is offering us by dying on the cross for our sins and by asking us to lay our life down, he's asking us to let go of the one sweet tart for what he offers, which if we're going to extend the candy metaphor, is like all the perfect sweet tarts forever and ever. We hold on to our lives, we hold on to our stuff, we hold on to our ambition and our pride. We hold on to what we think is best. But what God is saying is that we can let it go and he will give us something greater. Eternal life with Jesus is far greater than the most perfect life on earth. And so when we know that Jesus paid the price for our sin, and when we get to know his great love for us, what he's asking of us to take up our cross, to give everything, to follow him, is not bad. It is so, so good. And the gospel, God's love for us, the good news of Jesus dying on the cross and rising again, it matters. It is the most true thing in this whole world. And as we learn about Jesus and who he is and what he did, that should change our hearts. And we should learn to love God more and more. And God will help us. We can't take up our cross and deny ourselves by ourselves. We need help. And God will help us. So every day, we can pray, oh God, help us deny ourselves. Help us follow you for real. And he'll help. Whether you're a kid or a grown up, a boy or a girl, no matter who you are, no matter what your circumstances are, 
You can find ways to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. And it's going to be something that we learn over and over again. You guys, I'm 29 and I still have to learn what it means to deny myself and follow Jesus and take up my cross. So don't worry if you're thinking, but I'm a kid. What are you talking about, Miss Julia? All we need to remember is that we want our hearts more and more to be focused on Jesus. And the more our hearts are focused on what God teaches us in the Bible and what Jesus has done for us, the more we'll become like Jesus and the easier it will be to follow him. Because, you know, Jesus said that we have to deny ourselves. We have to lose our life so that we may gain it. And that might seem kind of hard. But when we understand what Jesus offers us, it is so easy. Yeah? Let's pray, you guys. Great job today. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you that you came for us. You came to give us new life, better life, God. Help us to learn about you and how you are so powerful and so loving. And Jesus, help us to learn how we deny ourselves. It feels very hard. But Jesus, we know that everything you say is right and true. So help us to understand this part of the Bible, how we can turn away from what we think is best and turn towards what you say is best. Help us to be patient because learning this takes time. And God, for me as a grown-up, help, help me continue to learn this. Thank you that you've brought us together into community to learn your word together. Help us to study the Bible. Help us to praise and worship you and talk to you in prayer. Thank you for your great big love for us. We love you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great job, everybody. I know that today's lesson was kind of complicated, but I am so proud of you for watching and listening. And just know that even grown-ups have to keep learning this stuff. Yeah, it's part of life, but it's a great part of life. And I'm so glad that we get to do it together. Now go have a great day. Go let in the same way. Go let your light shine. Yeah. You guys are so wonderful. God is amazing. And I'll see you next week. Bye.